what I would like to present to you today is um, connected to some ideas I've had um, for taking uh, approaches uh, from game audio and from designing a music system for a game and looking at how it might help me as a composer um, a structure my works that are not destined for games, so they could be abstract works, could be um, um, for other media, uh, arts installations. Um, so um, the um, investigation is into um, what uh, audio implementation software for games does within games, but also how flexible it is outside of that medium as well. Um, so uh, it is connected to the fact that um, I found myself recently in a situation um, trying to complete my D Maz, uh, which is not in game music. In, it is uh, a, a practical composition degree um, where I'm looking at um, timbre transformations in particular as um, a structuring parameter for my music. Uh, and also uh, finding myself involved in, um, in providing audio sound effects and music for a, a little independent video game, which is another interest of mine. So uh, it's been very uh, tough in terms of uh, uh, time, so I've brought the two together and um, uh, uh, I've brought the idea uh, to do with timbre transformations into my work for the little game and, um, and it will be part of what uh, I'm going to present today. So it's very practical, I'm going to be um, showing a, a segment of this audio system uh, here in this application called FMOD, um, it's one of the market leaders uh, in terms of providing, it's known as audio middleware for games, uh, so this is something that a game engine can speak to um, and uh, send signals to uh, and receive the music back and uh, um, and achieve this interactivity of um, the choices of the player um, affecting the structure of, of the music. Um, and um, so I, I will be playing through this example and looking in detail at some of the things that are happening. Um, as a very quick introduction, um, the game that I'm working for is called Futurist. It's uh, quite a simple, uh, old-school, uh, two-dimensional point-and-click adventure game. So, just as uh, to um, to bring this closer to you, this is a, a video recording of the game, but it's in a, in a, a very basic state, um, work in progress with uh, nowhere near the kind of um, a gold standard finished product, and it only has placeholder music and audio. As just to to um, to bring the the gameplay style of um, of this game closer to you for the presentation today. So I'll just play this one for you. Um, just going to start a bit earlier. Um, so we've got some. Uh, so. This little robot here is our player character, and um, you click on objects to make um, Rust um, uh, walk from place to place and engage in different puzzles, find items, combine items, and uh, make them suitable for solving puzzles. And as we solve puzzles, we progress um, stage to stage, level to level. Um, and um, uh, it were much more interested in this sort of uh, hand painted graphics aesthetic and and uh, and this sort of nostalgia um, uh, effect of this old school point and click game than in any kind of um, uh, cutting edge technology, as you can see. Um, so there we go. So we can click on various objects and characters and engage with them in different ways. Okay. Um, so that was a very quick one. So that's what the music system is, is for. And um, um, I'm composing the music in Cubase using synthesizers, some sample libraries as well. So. Um, 
in his basic state, the music sits in Cubase as a linear composition, um, uh, which um, allows me to make sure that um, it is musically what I want it to be. But in order to make it suitable for uh, adaptive audio, I then have to um, make decisions about um, slicing it up and uh, mixing it down to um, uh, to smaller segments uh, and uh, uh, different sizes of stems, so that I can actually um, use uh, F mod to the uh, best advantage to to create a, a flexible adaptive music system. Um, and the game itself is. Um, is being uh, made in uh, the Unity game engine. Um, so um, this is what the environment looks like. Sorry, um, uh, and uh, we can see the, the game level um, in that middle screen. I don't know how to pause the slideshow. I'll try. Um, I'll just go back to the image instead. Um, and uh, this is very good also to me as a composer to have access to this, uh, which is the environment of the programmer in particular, uh, but I can uh, actually uh, put audio events in and test them out, and you can play uh, the game in real time and see what's going on in terms of scripting and how it relates to audio, and it can also play back real time in FMOD running in parallel as an application on uh, on my PC, so I can just um, um, uh, swap between the windows and I can see what's going on in real time. Um, so on to the FMOD file. Um, I'm going to try and use the real estate as best as I can. Um, it looks just like a sequence, so you've got your tracks with um, audio files um, uh, laid out and, um, and there's a timeline um, but uh, the special thing about this compared to any other sequencer is that the timeline is not linear which we will see it can be but it can be many other things as well uh, it can be related just to a par parameter change um, and also it has um, another dimension of timeline um, uh, which is used for transition events, uh, which only opens uh, when a transition is, uh, is triggered. Um, and so we have a, a basic list of assets, which are these audio files. And uh, just to give you a quick overview, um, I have some um, longer loops in here that um, I can use as the, the backdrop, the spine of, of, of my piece. Um, and so I have um, a basic, um, a basic droney sound like this, which is probably going to be quite quiet. <coughs> So this is um, a very basic um, type of drone, which then becomes one loop uh, within the composition. Um, uh, and I have others that I know will work well um, in parallel because they uh, would have been designed together uh, for me. Uh, my favorite uh, VST synthesizer, uh, Absinthe, has three oscillators. So, um, so then I can mix down each oscillator into a, a separate stem, uh, but I, I know at that stage that they will, will uh, work well together and exactly what the, what the effect is going to be, um, because they would have been designed um, simultaneously. Um, so I can have another one, um, just here, which... Uh, yeah, so it's all really quiet. Um, And so these are, um, are there to provide me with these uh, longer loops, uh, um, the backdrop. But I have um, even um, single chords uh, here that uh, 
they allow me to get into the, the more flexible area of, um, um, of uh, triggering uh, smaller segments of my composition in different ways, whether it be uh, pre-designed by me in terms of timing or actually quite random. Um, uh, all of it is possible. Uh, and it's a really uh, flexible environment in terms of uh, designing uh, um, an uh, indeterminate environment. So um, aspects of editorial music are, are very much there and uh, it's really easy and really user-friendly in terms of putting that in place. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'll have a chord like this, which is nice and pleasant. Um, the nature of the game, of course, has to inform the style of my music, so um, it's unlikely to, to be anything to um, um, uh, too strident or uh, too gritty. Uh, the game is, um, is not of that nature. Um, and I have uh, basically five chords which are generated through a, a simple um, pitch rotation. Uh, and so all of them are here as separate events. Um, uh, but they, they come from a, a, a longer um, five element chord progression. Um, And I can audition everything here. I can audition these uh, assets while the main project is playing back as well. So um, it's very um, convenient for trying out combinations that maybe um, uh, I hadn't thought of before, but might be kind of spur of the moment ideas. And I can get um, immediate feedback on whether the combination works or not. <clears throat> Um, so, uh, this little snippet uh, covers uh, four levels, um, although it could easily be expanded onto a, a longer time scale within the game. Um, and um, I'm going to be playing through it in stages and um, looking at um, what adaptive audio techniques are implemented and uh, reflecting on um, what I think is interesting, therefore, um, going beyond game music or outside of game music to other, um, other contexts for composition. So I'll make a start. Um, try to uh, keep an eye on the limiter there, so we don't get too many nasty <coughs> pops and crackles. Okay. So it opens with a very simple kind of fading introduction. Uh, just about right. There are a number of events here which are running in parallel on the timeline. Not all of them are active at the moment. And if I just leave it like this, um, it will reach the, um, the end of this segment and just loop back to the front. Um, and. Um, um, these stems were designed as loops, but also to make sure that the transition truly is uh, unnoticeable. I've got some crossfade little snippets going on there, which I've not created automatically uh, uh, when you slide uh, to um, uh, two pieces of waveform together. 
Um, so then um, I'll just uh, click it forward to, to uh, make it loop. So hopefully for a uh, for someone who can't see this visually, that transition would have been unnoticeable. Um, so in my game, um, Rust, the main character, um, might find some important items. So I could um, have um, in the script of the game a parameter set to send a signal to fmod uh, when an important item is found, and it could do something um, something like this. Um, what is happening in the background is there is a, what FMOD calls a multi-instrument, which contains all five of those chords, and they are triggered randomly uh, every time the parameter uh, called item find one is set to the value one. Um, so um, I don't know which of the harmonies is going to get triggered with every item. Uh, but it allows me to control um, the percentage chance for each of the chords, which is, again, a fantastic um, bit of flexibility there. And what's really good is that the chords, um, they are currently sitting in a so-called nested event, which you can see here. Um, if I go into it, this is what the multi-instrument multi actually looks like. Um, it, doesn't make much sense like this, but it's just trying to show you five stereo files within it, with a little fade in. Um, and uh, the great thing about using this um, nested event is that, regardless of how long or short my little events here are, um, because the nested event takes up the whole section of the music, the trigger works uh, whenever it's engaged. So it will. So F mod will uh, play one of these chords from the beginning of the audio event um, all across this, this section or even um, across several sections if I just stretch the, uh, the nested event uh, out uh, to what follows. Um, so within this um, multi-instrument I've got these separate files uh, currently playing randomly. They could be, I could decide on a, on a sequence um, I can randomize the pitch of it uh, every time it plays back, if, if that seems appropriate. Um, it will result in a kind of uh, um, a very interesting, potentially, um, musical composition that would just not work for this specific game. So again, going outside of the game context, there can be some really surprising effects because the, the, the pitch control here is not um, doesn't compensate for, for time stretching, so it does actually time stretch your event, which of course will then make the tempo uh, flow more flexible. Um, in, so lots of opportunities there for creativity and surprising myself as a composer as well. Um, so I, I want, if I go back, I could find another item. Um, but I could find an item which is so important that it makes me open up the progression to the next level, which is another parameter. There was a, a touch of a melody there. which sits in its own nested event. But also a whole new stem has now been activated. Uh, this first track here, which introduces the kind of more high-pitched um, arpeggiator there. Um, uh, and um, 
and this will now loop uh, with everything else, um, set, settling into a, a new section in my composition. Um, it relates to a new level of the game, but it doesn't have to. Um, Uh, this new layer has been introduced by means of, a, of an envelope, meaning that it had a smooth fade-in of three seconds, uh, and it can also have a, a smooth release um, achieved by the same means. Um, uh, I'll make the music progress to my next larger um, sectional division, uh, which will engage the transition timeline um, and within that one I have a stem which uh, fades in um, entirely controlled by the para parameter so there's a uh, volume envelope which um, relates to the to a parameter setting so uh, that exactly how much of the stem is faded in depends on how far we progress um, a, a, along the, the scale of the parameter. Um, First things first, I'll, um, I'll start the transition. So, potentially another important item found, or a puzzle solved, or a mini game solved. And now we're in this kind of added dimension that, that um, FMOD provides us with. The green highlighted area is a transition timeline. What happens within that timeline only happens when the transition is triggered. Um, it includes the tails of the events from the first section dragged into it, cross-faded with entirely separate events as well. And as far as game music is concerned, this is a particularly long transition. Uh, again, because I was interested in, in the possibilities of that for uh, going outside of, of just this environment. And so there's a, a timbre transformation taking place on one of the stems, which you can hear happening now. which um, connects better with my doctoral dissertation. And now we are already into my second section, although still within the transition timeline, which will close um, as we cross the boundary only relevant to that, to that timeline. So it, there are, there's audio information which is shared between the two timelines and the FMOD will make those decisions dynamically. So now we're out of the transition timeline, I can close it. Uh, so we hear more of that chord progression there. Um, have a whole new set of, of audio events here, um, some of which nested. Um, uh, and again, uh, um, something may happen in the game. For example, there's a, a robot character that we can fix and interact with. So if that were to happen, this parameter might go up. Which has brought in a, a whole new stem with uh, time stretch guitars that's sitting here in this nested event. And once again, it's a loop, but it's a loop of a completely different length to what's happening otherwise. So. Every time this loops, it will be a, a different combination with uh, with my other stems. Um, FMOD allows me to decide on quantization of this sort of changes, so I can 
decide exactly how quickly a, a change will start and whether or not it will be locked to the tempo grid. And I do have the tempo of 72, um, uh, 72 clicks to a minute set. Um, so it can be as tempo relevant as you want it to be or as flexible as you want it to be. of having a backward transition, which I don't have in this event, it's potentially uh, a very, very nice way of working with a more kind of A, B, A, C, um, more conventional structural working out, where you can return to something that has already happened, but you can bring in um, a slight variation. Um, and so then, finally, we have this option of changing our music pattern gradually. So uh, in our level three, um, Rust has to find a whole sequence of items to, uh, to solve his puzzle. So as he's finding the items in the sequence, this parameter item level three could gradually be increased. And it would be um, three volume envelope changes happening concurrently. Um, I'll try to zoom in on that. This um, stem will uh, crossfade back to what it was in the first section, 